This week, we have news from Oliva, Davidoff, and Cusano, as well as a travel advisory for a specific country known for cigars, and an FDA update. All that and more, so stay tuned. This is a Security Weekly production. Welcome, everyone, to Stogie Geeks News. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island. On the lines via Skype is Mr. Will Cooper. Welcome, Will. Hello, Paul. And you're broadcasting from the office today. Very nice. I'm broadcasting from, yes, the, uh, the library or the office, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Um, yep. So we've heard about this rumor from this next company uh, for a while, and we've heard rumblings, but the announcement was made official yesterday or today about Oliva Cigar Company. Yes, uh, they have been acquired. Uh, this has been something that's uh, there's been you know talk for a while that um, they were on the block, and um, we didn't really want to say anything until it was official. But now, uh, Jay Cortez, a company based out of Belgium, has acquired Oliva uh, Cigar Company. And um, a little about Jay Cortez. They're, they're not a small player by any means. Uh, they're a company based in Europe, uh, actually based in Belgium specifically. They're focused more on the machine-made and cigarello space, and their distribution is more in the European uh, uh, area. They make about 500 million cigars a year um, wow. in some 80 countries worldwide. Uh, they're also a private uh, company, the privately owned company by uh, the Bandamalo family. Um, and they've been around for 90 years. But this is really their first foray into premium cigars. They have one line that they have, uh, the Cavallo brand, which is um, their, excuse me, the Calvano brand, which is their um, premium line. But now with Oliva, they get a full um, premium company, so to speak. Well, that's interesting. Um, we'll see if that impacts anything from Oliva. Well, what we're seeing is it, it, it seems like, um, at least, and we always see this with acquisitions, it seems like it's going to be business as usual for now. Um, yeah. So the Oliva family is still going to be involved in uh, running the day-to-day operations of what is Oliva, which means for now the sales force is going to stay intact. I think that if this is a European company. It's actually probably good news um, for that stamp, you know, from that standpoint. For the FDA, that, yeah. Yep. Um, at the same time, you know, Oliva is going to be, obviously, it's going to be a very interesting thing. They could, they could take advantage of the uh, market penetration in Europe. Mm-hmm. They already have some presence in Europe, but with Jay Cortez in Europe, um, that's probably going to help, you know, them as well as far as that goes. Um, so, and the other thing is this includes uh, the factory as well, but the Oliva family is keeping their farms. Mm-hmm. So they'll, the family will still own the tobaccos. But I, I gotcha. think at least for the first couple of years, it will be business as usual. And then we'll see, you know, we'll as, see what as happens. Act, we'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Davidoff uh, Yamasa joins the black line. Yes. Um, so this is the latest black label joining Davidoff Nicaragua and Davidoff Escurio. Um, this one, Davidoff goes back to their roots. They go back to the D- Dominican Republic, and it's a mostly Dominican blend. Um, and it's using um, wrapper and binder from the Yamasa region. Now, Yamasa is something it's an area of the dominican republic that davidoff's been growing tobacco in for a while it's not this is not the first um time they've they've used this they've kind of prided themselves in what they've done there. it's a difficult area to grow tobacco and they've worked that for a while and if you remember the puro de oro line mm-hmm. that's probably the most uh, that's probably the biggest example of where they've used this particular wrapper but they've also used it in a lot of their um high-end limited editions but now this is a totally new blend that they're bringing to the table with the Yamasa. Um, and I mentioned it's a Yamasa binder, a, a Yamasa wrapper and binder, and a combination of Nicaraguan and Dominican um, tobaccos for the filler. Four sizes, Petit Churchill 4x48, Robusto 5x50, Toro 6x52, and a Pyramid 6 and an Ace by 52 Pricing starts at $12.90 up to $23. Can't wait to try that. Yes, and uh, yeah, we will be trying that very soon, is, is what I can tell you. Excellent. Cusano uh, is undergoing some line changes as it continues its revamp. Yeah, so, you know, much like Camacho and Avo had uh, their revamping, 
Um, now Kusano, we start. We started to see that earlier. Um, there were two big announcements around Kusano. Uh, first, they announced the Kusano Nicaragua Esteli, which is a new blend um, that um, they're releasing, featuring a uh, San Andreas uh, dark wrapper, a Connecticut Ecuador binder, and a combination of Nicaraguan and Dominican fillers in four sizes: five by fifty, six by fifty, six by sixty, seven by forty-eight. Um, what you need to know about Cusano, it's the value price line of Davidoff. They've uh, acquired Cusano about seven years ago. So um, this is a brand new line. And then the other thing they announced this week is that they have revamped their bundle lines. And as part of that revamping, they've standardized the sizes. They've changed the packaging and banding around and introduced a new blend uh, called the Cusano N1 Nicaragua. So, again, that Nicaragua theme mm. we're seeing permeate into the Cusano brand as well. I always liked Cusano. I'm curious to smoke some of the newer offerings. Yeah, you know, one thing about Cusano, in my opinion, Paul, is when I always would put a Cusano in my mouth, it's just there was always something Cusano about it. I could tell yeah, it, was it was very unique, yeah. Yeah, Joe Cusano, uh, Mike Cusano, I mean, those, or oh, Cusano, I always mess up their names, but there's something very distinct about whatever they've done, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of glad to see that, that brand get some life again. And there's a, we talked about Nicaragua on last week's show, but now there's a full travel alert for Nicaragua. Yeah, so we talked about last week um, a couple, uh, actually three uh, Americans were expelled from the country. And um, what's happened in the last week, it's not something that we need to panic about, but it's something we just have to realize that this is a Central American country that is a dictatorship and uh, has a communist regime in there. So... It's not a you know it's not the U.S., but um, right now the U.S. State Department has issued a travel alert, and there's a few factors going on there. Um, after those uh, U.S. folks were expelled, there were actually a um, a group of another group of six um, environmental activists that were expelled as well from Mexico, Argentina, and Costa Rica. Now, what we need to understand about that is they. Um, one of the people who was expelled from the U.S. was also someone who was kind of consulting on the environmental end around the Nicaraguan Canal, or the proposed Nicaraguan Canal. It's a hotbed of a topic right now that the government's backing, and anyone who's perceived as maybe being against that mm -hmm. is kind of being perceived about being against the government, and the government's trying to move folks out of there. Concurrently, there's an election going on in the country right now. Uh, Daniel Ortega's up for, uh, for re-election, and they want to make sure that Daniel Ortega wins that election. So I know five years ago from talking to Jonathan Drew, there tends to be a lot of violence um, in the country during an election year. Hmm. So all these factors add them up. There's a travel alert. It doesn't mean they're telling you not to travel to Nicaragua. They're just telling you to have eyes behind your head right now. If it goes to a warning, that's where we've got to be more concerned. Gotcha. Yep. And, of course, the weekly FDA update. Yeah. Um, what we... Last week, we didn't have the information on this, but... Um... Oh, Will, you there? I'll encourage folks to listen to the Cigar Dave podcast because... Yes, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so on June 21st, there was a Cigar Industry Summit hosted by the CRA, and um, we didn't have the information on it until uh, this past week, but... I encourage folks to go listen to the Cigar Day podcast that was um, last week's, which is um, on that particular podcast, you'll hear a, um, a roundtable that was conducted by Glenn Loop, George Padron, Jim Young of Davidoff, and Rocky Patel. And they talk a bunch about what happened as far as, um, you know, the the you know that meeting goes and I think the purpose of the meeting was twofold to educate people on what's going on but the other part of that is to they kind of laid out the framework of a plan and it sounds like there is a plan um, it's going to be partially on the legislative front and the plan being battle the FDA um, there's a plan on the legislative front there's a plan on the litigation front and they also mentioned the third front which we haven't been hearing much about till now which is actually negotiating directly with the FDA. I, don't, I can't say how good or bad or how effective that's going to be, other than it sounds like they realize the FDA may be in over their heads and maybe going directly to them can avoid some of the law, law, lawyer and legal costs right now. 
Um, so for folks who want to check that Cigar Dave show, it's the June 25th episode. I'd encourage you to check it out. It's about an hour-long discussion. And it's the first time industry people are really talking about this in a collaborative setting. Fantastic. That concludes this episode of Stogie Geeks News. You. No, I'm still here. Are you there, Will? We're just rounding out the show. You can tune in to the Stogie Geeks Live show every Monday evening yeah, at 6.30 here. p.m. Eastern Time. Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash live. Now on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the YouTube icon on our website and get all the latest news and reviews in the cigar industry from cigar-coop.com.